Many of us have assumptions of what Mexico looks like. The fact is, it's probably one of the countries in the world with the most variety. This is no more true than in the northern state of Chihuahua, where I've spent the last month, heading down from Ciudad Juarez and through the state capital to the surprisingly beautiful city of Parral. Today we're leaving Chihuahua by visiting the Pueblo Mágico of Creel, said to be the gateway to Las Barrancos del Cobre, or the Copper Canyons, via the world-famous Chepe Express train to Los Mochis, Sinaloa. The big question is, is it worth it? Is Creel something to write home about, or a tourist trap? Over the next three videos, we'll be delving deeper. But for now, welcome to Creel. Good morning everyone and welcome to Saturday morning in Creel in Chihuahua. I'm just clambering over the Creel sign at the Central Square. Nice and colourful as you can see behind me. Be careful where I'm walking David. Um, this is a Pueblo Magico. You know my feelings about these. Some of them can be absolutely brilliant. Some of them can be like they've just been given the name for the hell of it. But this one absolutely epitomises what Pueblos Magicos are all about and we can explore that in this video. It's sunny, it's bright, and it's rather windy, so my hair could be all over the place in this video. You have been warned. Let's explore. So I'm here just for the day. There's the Museo Tara Umara behind it with the railway tracks. We'll be on those railway tracks in the next video as we get on the Chepe Express, as you've seen in the intro already. But let's have a look at this central square. Trees, blue skies as always, and a kiosk in the middle. Bienvenidos a Creel, Pueblo Mágico. Lovely, a nice little cart thing. Yeah, the Sierra Tarahamura. That's the region as we head into the Copper Canyon. So Creel is like the stopping off point for many people in terms of tourism to head into the magnificent Copper Canyon. And you're seeing lots of artisan products dotted around and you'll probably see lots of people as well in colorful dresses, the women obviously. Um, those are the Raramori or the, as you can see in front of me at the museum, Tara Umara, which is the Spanish name for the indigenous people in this region. You can see up on that building there, E. Creel. It could either be Estacion Creel or Enrique Creel, as per that street sign up there. So it was called Estacion Creel when it was founded in 1907, and Enrique Creel was the governor of Chihuahua at the time. Creel, that's where I am, is primarily a logging town. So, like, lumber is a key element of the area's industry and economy, and also. Carne seca. I saw a ginormous bag of this in a shop, like um, jerky, I guess. Um, and also queso menonita, my favourite. Um, so you know, you get all the classic Chihuahua beef, cheese, you know, in terms of food in uh, Creel. We'll have some later, by the way. Food. Dog. And oh my God, the dogs are top tier here. There are so many of them. Like I went for a burger last night at this burger stand just after I got here. This dog followed me 15 minutes home, all the way home, all for half a sausage. Salchicha. Logs, that's what I was gonna talk about. So for those of you that saw my Serbia videos from last year, Creel is very reminiscent of Baina Bashta and Mokra Gorda in so many ways. All three of them have kind of got this hilly, leafy landscape, mountainous as well, where logging is a key element of the economy. So it feels like I'm walking around Serbia when I'm here with a, a slightly Mexican twist. Oh, copyright music. There's the train tracks. There's a, an Aramori lady with her dress. The uh, warning sign over there as you cross the tracks. There's a lot of uh, sand 
dust devil tornadoes, whatever they're called, um, all over the shop, just to highlight how windy it is. Um, but this video is not about logs, it's about rocks. There are a lot of these murals of the Naramori dotted around town, as well as signs saying things like, you know, respect the indigenous cultures, obviously. We'll touch on that a bit later. Train going through a tunnel. Waterfall, there's a waterfall, uh, I think Mexico's highest waterfall in the Barrancos del Cobre. Like I said, I'm only here for one day, so uh, <laughs> this video is purely about Creel. And as I said about rocks, we're gonna scrap the history stuff for a minute. We're gonna come back here later for some food. And we're heading in that direction to check out some monstrous rock formations. <laughs> But never mind the wind, because I found a huge long train, which obviously is the Jeppe Express, or at least one of them. Uh, there are many, we'll check this out more tomorrow. But there's another one here, Tequilero. Is that what, like one of those tequila train things? Um, like the one in uh, Guadalajara? I'm not sure. I think this used to be the, uh, well the Jeppe Express used to be originally part of a line that went from like Kansas or something in the US. I could be talking shit. I look, the dog's back. Hi, Han. I'm chilling with my amigo. <laughs> Hola. Um, <laughs> by the way, I was going to say, um, breathing is a bit of an issue here because uh, Creel is at 2,305 meters up. Oh, the dog's still there. Hello, Han. Um, so yeah, a bit like Mexico City, you know, when you get off the train, the train, the uh, plane, and you have a bit of an issue breathing and everything, but. You know, I've done it before. It's fine. There's the Jeppe Express. There's a nice green carriage there. Then the blue ones here, business class. That's what I'll be on tomorrow. It's good to get a nice little close up view of the train before I actually film the train video. Ferrocarril, oh, I can't say that. Right, it's a few hours later now. I'm hoping the wind has let up a little bit. But first, before we head up that way, I want to show you what I've seen to the left here. It's a clapped out, derelict, old Volkswagen van. Love this sort of thing. I don't know who it belongs to or whose land this is, but let's see anyway. There's rust down there, flowers growing um, between the rust. And there's the old dashboard, the pedals down there, wowzers. Yeah, it looks like it's been here for quite a while, all overgrown. It's even got a sunroof, um, well not anymore. <laughs> uh, it was registered in Sinaloa. 22 years ago. Yep, there's the sunroof up there. Lovely. Let's uh, get out of here and uh, journey up that way. We're heading to some uh, awesome rocky form formations and we're going to talk about the indigenous peoples some more. Let's head out of town. There's uh, a lot more sort of lodge style dwellings in terms of accommodation, like wooden huts, as you can see there. Cool. Kind of reminds me of uh, Mexiquil, as I said in the last video. Um, also in Mexiquil there were many kind of wooden lodges. It's almost like some, some sort of alpine place, you know. As I said, we are rather high up. This is very much like Bajnabashta that I mentioned earlier in Serbia when I walked out of the town to a monastery in the middle of nowhere. And you have horses, you have chickens clucking in the background. It's kind of the same thing. It's a repeat video. Look at the views over there. I guess that's a cemetery in the foreground with the rocks above it. 
does kind of feel like when I was in the um, Mennonite area in Guatemoc. I feel like such an outsider, you know? But I should, because I am one. I'm in, and um, by in, I mean that you have to pay to get in at that little hut thing there. It's uh, 40 pesos, 40 pesos, um, because I believe it's like um, Rara Muri land. I can't say that word, sorry. Um, so, you know, as I said earlier about sort of respecting indigenous peoples, um, you know, I guess that money goes to support them, maybe. Kirill just went orgasmic, top tier, look at it. Absolutely stunning. Green, blue, and then that grey of the rocks. Amazing. Again, like Mexico, it's like this desolate, rocky landscape. The views are amazing. In regards to the Raramuri, I've read that many of them actually still follow a way of life like a traditional way of life as in living in caves and living in or well, under like sheltered rocky areas um, and many of them migrate to different areas depending on the time of the year you know for someone that isn't an indigenous person in this area of mexico it is it's fascinating stuff because of course it's a completely different way of life that honestly i don't know a lot about um so that's why i'm here to learn more Where's this? Oh. Right, I think I'm on someone's farmland or something, so I have to climb through this fence with barbed wire on. I've got to get down onto that pathway down there, or road. Ah. Uh. Right, this is really difficult. In between tornadoes, I'll do the talking bit. So, in regards to indigenous peoples, I think the way movies portray them, it's always like as these savage, spear-wielding maniacs who are going to cannibalise your pancreas. And, you know, there might be an element of truth in that. Of course, there are some around the world. You know, that island near India, I think, where you can't go near, otherwise they throw spears. Just regular people, just because they live by different means or follow different customs or traditions doesn't mean that they are aliens, you know, and somewhere like Creel, I would say, at least from my time here today, it feels like those indigenous peoples are the dominant people here, you know? So as a result, that's what I mean about the respect thing. You might feel like an outsider here, but that's the point. The very nature of the word indigenous is that those people are from here. Just in time. Oh crap, where am I? That kind of sums up final season Mexico right Jesus Christ <sighs> literally in the middle of a sand tornado brilliant and um, this Valle Los Hongos is that way we'll go there first actually that's Valley of the Mushrooms not actual mushrooms I mean rocks shaped like mushrooms I was just wondering what this is, then I saw agua on it. I guess it's like a big water tank thing. And the houses or the buildings there made just from big stones. Valley of the mushrooms. Here we go. I just read on there, and it just reminded me of researching this video, that these rock formations, as well as the other one we're gonna go and see, are 20 million years old. 20 million. Doesn't it just look otherworldly again, like Mexico? This bizarre, barren desert landscape with rocks that look like mushrooms. Do they look like mushrooms? Um, I guess kind of. It's a bit of a stretch, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> But you know, it is a touristy thing and the money that I gave and the money that other people give, I hope that does go to the people here. You know, they clearly live in quite sort of basic ways, um, you know, and uh, whatever, you know, you can do to 
support people here and um, there is like a bit down there where people are selling like you know uh, local artisan things <sighs> it is like being on another planet with those sheer vertical rock faces and just look at the view behind me <sighs> absolutely awe-inspiring and spectacular so yeah if like me you are only in Creel for one day and you haven't got time to stop off at the different places on the Chepe Express I think coming to this sort of place it's a short walk from the town is ideal because although you know you won't get the proper picture of the Copper Canyon that other people may do at least you get to see this I think it's a good uh, substitute that's the word um, I like it I love rocky formations they are an absolute childlike geek fascination for me 20 million years old you know the dinosaurs were 65 million years ago Let's now go to the Valley of the Frogs, which is just over there. And yes, you guessed it, the rocks look like frogs. Um, on the map, when I looked at it, I thought this would be a much longer walk and that the two valleys would be a further distance away from each other. But actually, they're kind of in the same area. It's just over there, literally. We got some more dogs at the Valley of the Frogs. Um, I've got to admit, um, okay, that one kind of looks like a frog. I don't want to be that person, but they could have just called it a pile of rocks. Yeah, there's one of the frogs. There are some dogs down there in the shadow, having a little nap. Hello, Hans. Hello. Um, but yeah, this could be like a, a scene or a lo filming location for like Star Wars or Star Trek or something when they come away to an inhospitable alien world, you know? People often say the world is too developed, it's too industrialized, that there is no space remaining for cities, etc. That the world is coming to a disastrous demise. Then look at this. It's a different story, right? Which pretty much sums up Chihuahua. So as we head back, there is like a cave, I believe you can go to, which is kind of where I was when I first walked into that bit and just after I paid. Um, I believe they have people, you know, selling those artisan products just like at the mushrooms. And there's a mission as well that's right near the frog one. You might have seen it in the drone shots. This hotel has tours. So essentially I've done tour one today. Um, that is another waterfall. I think it's about 25 kilometers away from Grill. Um This one, I think that's where you go to the Teleferico. Uh, it's quite a distance away into the Copper Canyon and that is the big waterfall I was talking about. I'm trying to look for something that I may have not had in a video before. Oh, Pastor. As always, I've come away from that crappy tourist street. Overpriced tourist street. Hello, dog. Um, and I think I might have found somewhere, but I'm just having a quick check and see if there's anywhere else. No, let's go this way. Classic local place. We've got quesadillas, enchiladas, burritos, tortas, tacos, everything. No overpriced steaks in here. Okay, oh fuck. Further proof that walking away from boneless chicken wing street is the best move. There's a bus. 
I forgot to, well I didn't forget to film, I couldn't really film in there because it was just too difficult, there wasn't enough space. But I had two burritos, one of them was barbacoa, <laughs> brilliant, it was amazing. And the other one was jamón, queso and frijoles. It didn't look like much, but to be honest when you have beans, ham and cheese mashed together, it's not exactly going to look like Kim Kardashian, is it? Yeah, good stuff. And it's great to go to those places because you, that woman, basically, an abuelita cooking in her own kitchen with her own, you know, saucepans and everything. It's so, uh, just very real and authentic. You know, it's not these uh, chain restaurants and all the overpriced shit down there. Right, I've had enough. Um, I'm going to go home because I've got to plan my English lessons for next week, believe it or not. This video has been a difficult one to film. I'm not going to lie. Difficult is a bit of an understatement, but... I hope it's all worked out in the end. Uh, would I recommend Krill? Honestly, I can't recommend it because I've only been here one day. It would be stupid to say that, yeah, it's great, it's not great, but saying that, is it the most spectacular, wonderful place I've ever been in Mexico? No, it's not. Uh, of course it's not. But still, I would say, come here if you want to do the um, Jepe Express. That's the reason I'm here, and that's the reason why a lot of people come here. You know, of course, Krill is uh, the gateway, essentially, to... Um, the copper cannon it's not the copper cannon itself so you know it's somewhere to experience somewhere to explore and somewhere to stay for a night or two the thing i would say about Kill, in its defense to its credit is about what i said at the beginning about magic towns i really feel like Kill is one of the rare magic towns that is unique in that it actually does what pueblo magico should say on the tin if you know what i mean preserving culture whether it be mexican spanish colonial indigenous it does it. So that's all I'm going to say on the matter. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching. See you next time on the train. It will be tomorrow in my timeline, uh, but it will be in a few days for you probably. So I'll see you next time. Shut up. And I'll uh, see you on the train. <laughs>